Hey guys, what's going on? So I thought I'd do a video on trim. So I went to YouTube and I kind of looked it up and I see there's a million videos. So I thought, ah, oh, this will be useless. But I watched a bunch of those videos and I saw some big gaps and some holes in those videos. So I've decided to go ahead and make a trim tutorial. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put together a bunch of short clips. I'm going to try and keep them under 10 minutes. And we're just going to go through different aspects of trim. So go to my channel, go to my playlist, and look under Trim Tutorial, and you will find all these short clips compiled in one place. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Deardorf, and this is Detroit DIY. Let's get started. I just want to start out by saying that this video and all of this whole tutorial is going to be for DIYers. I'm not going to go over your head. I'm going to explain everything in very simple terms. And I'm going to try my best to not get anybody lost in what's going on. So in this video, we're going to discuss the tools that you need to install trim. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to have to decide is, are we using an air nailer or a hammer and nails? So guys, I highly recommend that you spend the money and you buy an air nailer. I prefer the pneumatic. I do not much care for the cartridge nailers. They're fine. They're handy. You don't have to drag a hose around with you. There is an expense that goes with them as far as the cartridges are concerned that I've managed to avoid by staying a little bit old school with a pneumatic nailer. These pneumatic nailers are nice. They're, you can buy a variety of brads for them or pin nails and they work out really good. Now you don't have to. If you don't, you're going to wish you would have, but you don't have to. So let's discuss the option number two beyond the air nailer. Option number two, a box of finished nails. Guys, this kind of sucks when you're laying on the floor, you're trying to hold your trim in place, you're trying to start nails and get nails in. Um, you're using a, a smooth face hammer, which you're, you're going to need anyway, whether you use an air nailer or not, some type of a smooth faced hammer, not a waffle face. It'll tear everything up if you make a little miss. This will just put a little dink without putting a nice deep pattern in it. And no matter whether you use the pneumatic nailer or the box nails, you're going to need a nail set. Let's get a little closer look at this. This is a nail set. And what this is for is to finish putting your nail in the rest of the way so that you can countersink it slightly into the trim so that you can get your wood putty on there and get a nice finish on your trim. Sometimes your pneumatic nailer will have an issue and will not sink the nail all the way. And you'll have to go back through and one or two nails maybe and push them in with a nail set. So no matter what, you're going to need a nail set or you might find yourself in trouble. And I also just want to say that there are some great deals out there on pneumatic nailer, compressor, hose type kits um, that you can get at the big box stores and they're decent. And as you can see, I have a Husky compressor. I've had it for many years. Um, it's burned up maybe three belts. I kind of decided the next time it burns a belt up, it's out the door and I'm going to get a new one. Um, knock on wood because it hasn't burned up a belt in about a year. So maybe it's due. Maybe it's not uh, Maybe the last one I put on was the golden belt. But anyway, let's move on. We're going to need a tape measure We're going to need a pencil. You want it nice and sharp a nice clean point on that pencil for marking your trim We're going to need a stud finder We need to get those nails in the studs if they're not in the studs and you just sink the nail in the drywall, then there's nothing holding your trim at the top. So, and we'll discuss this further in the next video where we'll be installing some trim. One of the next videos. So the next thing we're going to need is a level. The longer the better. This is a short one, not one that I would really use, but one that fits in the camera and one that's easy for me to show you. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to check the level of the floor because if the floor has is low on one end or high in the other end, then that's going to cause you complications in your 45s on your inside corners and your outside corners. So we need a level so we can check that floor. 
The next thing we're going to need is some painter's tape. And what we're going to do with the painter's tape is put it along the top of the trim on the wall and we're going to mark our studs on this. So we're not marking on our paint and we're not marking on anything else. We know where all our studs at before we even get started. We're going to need some wood filler. Wood filler is going to fill up our nail holes, get everything squared away and nice as far as that's concerned. We're going to need some trim glue. I like the tight bond trim glue. This is not the correct glue when we go to installing. I will have the correct glue, but I do use tight bond trim glue. It's a very good glue. All right, next on the list, guys, we're going to need a miter saw protractor. This is going to tell you your inside corners and your outside corners, the exact angle and the cut angle of each piece of trim because they vary. So you absolutely need to have a miter saw protractor. If you don't, you're just going to fight it the whole way. They're not very expensive, 13 bucks or 14 bucks, I don't know, 16 bucks, something like that on Amazon. They're not very expensive. Um, they're pretty handy. You got a nice little gauge on them. Tells you everything that you need to know as far as your inside angles and your total angle. Okay, we're getting down there. We're going to need some sandpaper. We're going to need this for any ends that we cope. We're going to need to clean them up a little bit and we're going to get into that. We're also going to need some spray adhesive, which I do not have any currently, but we will get some and I'll show you some tricks and tips with that to clean up your copes. We are going to need silicone, paintable silicone for trim. As you can see right here, this is for trim. It won't crack, it won't shrink. And it'll take it'll do a really nice job for you and this is what I recommend we're gonna need a caulk gun obviously we're gonna need a few you know rags and so on and so forth we're gonna need an angle grinder with a flap wheel like this preferably a new one not one that's all wore out like this one or if it's intricate trim I like to use a metal cutting disc or you can use a coping saw I don't own a coping saw. I've never used a coping saw. I may go get one and just try it out. I've always used an angle grinder to do coping. Works out really nice for me. The last tool on the list is a miter saw. You're going to need a miter saw. The little box saws, the plastic ones with, at the big box stores, won't cut the angles that you may run into or that you may need. If you're doing a painted caulking, you could maybe cut it with that and just kind of stick stuff together and fill all the big gaps with caulk. Not desirable and not what you want. If you're doing the trim yourself, you're doing it for the satisfaction of doing a good job. So, and everything lays in the details and this is going to give you all the, the nice cuts that you need. If you don't want to spend or go through the expense of buying a miter saw, there's plenty of rentals. Um, the saw you'll need to check it and make sure that it's square and that everything's tuned up correctly and we're going to cover that also in this trim tutorial video so guys got to have a miter saw let's talk money real quick because you know you can spend three four five thousand dollars getting trim installed in your house so most DIYers are going to have 90% of these tools to begin with you might have to add a miter saw protractor you may have to add an air compressor or a brad nailer, um, you know, something along those lines. But for, you know, 400 bucks, 350 bucks, sometimes you can find a better deal than that. You can get a combo air compressor, brad nailer with a hose, everything you need. Um, angle grinder, you can pick them up at different places for 35, 45 bucks. It doesn't need to be anything special. I've burnt up so many that I basically quit buying the expensive ones and I buy the cheaper ones because... I find I put them in the trash quite a bit because I do things with them that I probably really shouldn't do. So, yeah, that's how it is. Other, otherwise, guys, all the other stuff is just minimal basic stuff. It's, it's pennies. So even if you spend, you know, $600 putting all your tools together to do the trim yourself, you're, in the end of the day, you're still going to save a ton of money. That's all we got for this video. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed yourself, click on one of those two videos. They're going to pop up right there. Remember, go to my channel, playlist, 
hit that subscribe button while you're there and look through trim tutorials and you're going to start finding a whole bunch of short clips 10 minutes six minutes however long they take on trim tutorials guys i'm going to try to get everything in there that you need to watch that you need to see leave me your comments if there's anything that i've missed or that you would like to see or that you're having problems with please get it in there let me see it and i'll help you out thanks for watching everybody